Good morning, Veronica. Kate, hello. Gosh, I've missed you guys so much. And George, hi, George. Hannah, oh, makes me so happy. Little Miss Robin. <laughs> hello. Oh, that's a special special thing. <laughs> Good morning, Rachel. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. You have no idea. So this morning, I shipped all the advent calendars. I'm so psyched. They're all out in the world. Give them a little bit of time for them to scan them in, though, because I've just dropped off 60, and I've dropped off about 80 on Saturday. Um, a little bit more than 60 today. Hi. And then, um, obviously, we've got the stitch long at 10, which is Ah, so exciting. I'm getting a new sofa at 12. So fingers crossed they don't come early because, yeah, I'm not getting off to live. <laughs> I'm going to stay in, gonna stay in chat for a while. So um, I thought today on the very first day, I would just explain really quickly um, what's the deal. So all the videos will be saved so you can watch them whenever you want to. Um. Give it about five minutes after the video ends because I have to put all the information in. Do you know what I mean? I have to add the stitches and the whatever, you know, and the, what day it is and all that kind of stuff in the strands and the color because I can include the color number this time. So everybody, if you want to use the same colors as me, you can. And if not, then that's fine too. Obviously, I'm using the gorgeous anchor threads that are all here and I've just these are the exact same ones they've sent me two of each one so I wound them on the pegs because I like you know I like that better um so I've already done that in preparation um and then labeled them as well so that I remember what they're called and so I can write it in the caption they'll also be uploaded to YouTube so I'm gonna try and do that literally right after this um so that I don't wait. Normally I would wait until the evening, but then I sometimes forget. And then the next morning I just do the next video. And then by the end of Friday, there's like five videos to upload. So I want to try and stop that bad habit. Um, and then just do it right after this. So if you've got a question right after the video and I don't respond, it's because my phone is uploading the video and it normally takes about two hours. So I'm going to see if I can't put it like on my laptop or something or whatever, but I just thought I'd give a little PSA. Um, if you fall behind, don't worry, you're not actually behind. This is more like a work your own pace thing. So some things will be big, like the sunflower is going to be a lot of stitching. We'll do it in two sections probably, um, like one part for the middle and part for the outside. Same with really big things like the pumpkin or really intricate things like the cornucopia up here. So Oftentimes, I might show you how to do it in the 40 minutes and have a chat and whatever, um, but you can always catch up later on the catch-up days at the very end if you only have a little bit, or you can work on it um, at the weekends, but all the videos are there, so don't ever feel like the next day, if you haven't finished the thing before, oh my gosh, you're so behind and you're never going to catch up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we chose a autumnal kind of thing because it goes all the way until almost the end of uh November so if you don't finish it when we finish you still have a lot of time and uh to you know to work on it and it's still kind of relatable to the season <laughs> if you finish it in November so don't worry about that I think that's it um use the hashtag hashtag the Barmy Fox S A L. You can also use Anchor Crafts, Anchor Crafting, Anchor Threads. Those are all super good. Um, and tag Anchor as well because I'm sure that they would love to see your work and repost too. So I repost everything. <laughs> I have no shame. I'm so proud of you guys. Um, so I'm like, yes, babe, look how good you did. Because <laughs> I'm like the ultimate hype woman. Um, so that's what you'll see from me, just like, <laughs> just getting in there. Um, but yeah, also go to the hashtags and uh, have a look at other people's work because I cannot tell you 
how encouraging it is when you get someone saying, oh my gosh, look at the colors you chose are so pretty. Yeah, we all have the same colors this time, but someone might choose a different color, okay? Uh, or your stitching is beautiful, or it looks so good, or leave some hearts, leave some love. Like, it's not just about, you know, doing the, doing the thing, but it's about like interacting with the people, um, like really get into it. And it doesn't have to be long. Like sometimes I'll just take five minutes when I, instead of scrolling through randomly, I'll go straight to the hashtag and just like all the ones I can, because I just want to show you guys that I love you. Okay. So we're going to start now because I don't want to sit and chat for too long. Um, and we're going to start with this flower right here and we're going to do easy peasy, all six strands. So you don't have to separate anything today. Um, and if you look at the FAQ page, looks like this, there's like a little colored in copy here. So you see, we're going to do this flower right here. So you need all six strands. So we're not going to show how to separate or anything like that. I've chosen um, these two colors, which is the pink and the red. So it's number 39 and star 20. I knew you would start with this. <laughs> do you know what? I almost started with the leaves, but I was like, oh, that's 10 leaves because there's they're kind of sprinkled around and they all kind of look the same. So if we do 10, that's a lot, but we're not going to do it the same as we did on the last one. We're going to do it a different way. Um, so hopefully it'll work. We'll just see, but we're going to use these two colors and I chose the dark color for the outside and the lighter color for the inside, but obviously you can do it any way you want to. We're going to do an outline and we're going to do a fill. It's not going to be a satin stitch, so don't worry about that. I know Hannah did the ooh face, um, but it's not going to be a satin stitch. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. So choose one color that we're going to do the outline part. That's going to be a lazy daisy, easy peasy. And then we're going to fill it with just straight stitches. And the straight stitches, they don't have to be smooth. They don't have to be satiny. They don't have to be parallel. We're just going to fill it in so that um, we have some color on the inside of our lazy daisies. And then we're going to do the inside. So whichever way you want to do it, you can do the outline in light pink and fill in the dark red. Sorry, dark pink, dark red. Um, or you can switch it the other way and do the outline in the red and the fill in the pink. It's totally up to you. Or you can just do uh, the two layers like I have in the picture. So if you see, I don't know if you can tell very well there. But we've definitely got the two different colors. So let's grab some. Now, lots of people always see what's the perfect length of thread. Um, a lot of people, especially if you're cross-stitching, they'll say from the, your fingertips to your elbow. That's about it. I like mine a lot longer than that. Um, almost double that, actually. Yeah, double that. <laughs> but I've been stitching for a long time, so you can always go back and get more. Okay? You don't have to... Um, you know, do how I do. And there's a couple different ways you can do your knot as well. So I'm just going to quickly show that because it's the very first video. And some people, they've never done this before ever. So we want to be easy peasy. Um, I don't think I showed it in the prep video. So to thread your needle, I put my thread in between my thumb and my finger and I do this motion. See how it kind of pops out there? I put the eye of my needle right over the top where I know that that thread's going to pop out. Can you see? Beauty blogger. There you go. And then you just pull it through. Some people have a really hard time with this um, and they use a needle threader and that's fine too. So I've got my needle threader over here. I know it because I just put it away. <laughs> and with these ones, um, I like these ones the best. You can get the really cheap ones with the wire but the wire always snaps for me. I don't know what's the deal. Maybe I'm just a bit too aggressive, but you put the hook in. So you've got two hooks, all six strands. Yep. You put the hook in like this. Okay. And then you take your thread and you put it in the hook. Can you see that? And then you just pull the hook through the eye. And I've got all six strands, like I said, so it'll probably be a little bit hard for me. There you go. Yeah? And that's how you can do it. 
So do it the way that works the best for you. I would try to not lick the end of the thread because it can make your needle um, tarnish and get rusty in the inside of the eye. So there we go. To make a knot, there's a couple different ways. You can do like some people do like a waist knot or they'll start way over here and then they'll start stitching over here. Um, I like to just make a knot on the back. It's easier for me. Some people do no knots and they just leave a tail on the back and they do it all at the end. It's completely up to you how you feel comfortable, but I like to do a little knot. So I like to do a little loop like this. Morning, Nam. And then put the tail in through the hole and you pull. So if you just hold the very bottom, you can move the knot in up and down, okay? Like that. Sorry, like that. Now the other way you can do it, let me just snip it off, because it doesn't work if you have it already, is you take the end like this and your needle like this, okay, and put it over top and hold it there and do a wrap. So one, two, it's probably good. Then you're gonna hold the knot there like that. I think I've just let go of the end actually. And pull it through. All the way through. And then at the very end, you have your knot. This is a quilter's knot. Lots of people like to do this one because it's very easy. So I'll just snip that little knot off and do it one more time. Just because, like I said, I know a lot of people are ve like they've never done this before. So you just put it over top like this. Yeah. Hold it with your thumb. And I do like two wraps. Okay. You have to make it a little bit loose. Don't pull it like so tight. Otherwise, you can't pull your thread through. And you're just going to pull it. I try and show it at the beginning of the stitch alongs on the very first day. So the first day is always a little bit longer because I like to do how to thread your needle, how to do a knot. Because that's like people will say, I didn't have a problem with the stitch, but I had a problem with the knot. <laughs> Which is quite funny. Okay, so now we're ready. I'm just going to zoom in here. And like I said, we're going to do all six strands and we're going to do a lazy daisy, but we're going to do an open one at the bottom. So we're going to come up. Let's put the flower in the middle so that all the comments are down here at the bottom and you can't see so well. Okay. Okay. So you're going to come up here on the side. Now, normally a lazy daisy is like a teardrop, so it's nice and pointy at the bottom. But these are going to be the open, open ones like this. Okay? And you're just going to leave a loop and come down. Almost think of these as like an N or like an upside down U. Okay? And we're going to come down on the other side like this. The video is quite dark, but the light is on, so... Oops. And you're going to leave this loop and you're going to come up right at the very top hump inside the loop. Good morning, Jamie T. Okay. And you're just going to tug it a little bit like that. So it makes like an upside down you. And then you're going to use a little tacking stitch on the other side, not inside, on the other side, not a big one. Just a little one. And that's just going to hold that loop in place. Okay? That's it. And we're going to do that all the way around. So we come up again. You can come through the same hole or you can go do a little bit next to it. It's up to you. I have one minute and my break is over. Oh. I hope you're having a good day. Okay, thank you. She says, I like the color you picked for this. It's like a really nice dark red. And we just keep going around and around. Now you don't wanna pull it too tight 
because what will happen is that your your threads or your fabric will start to pucker with the threads being pulled towards each other. And you'll know, you'll know when it happens, believe me. You'll be like, oh no, didn't mean to do that. Just had to rebuy the threads because the ones I bought, oh, never came. Did you message them? Or did like the order actually go through? I'm already having my 11Zs break at 1015 because it's Monday. I know. So we um, packed the car, me and Kimberly next door, packed the car at like 815. Okay, bye. Have fun. (laughs) And then we went up to the post office because the post office lady, um, she gets there at 845. So we drove up there for... 8.40, 8.40, just like, maybe she'll be there early. And she was. So that was good. So we unloaded all of those, carried them all in. And then, like I said, she scans them in throughout the day. So um, literally just like whenever she has time between customers. And then, um, then I came home and then had to sweep under the sofa and and, um, David moved the sofa this morning because we were getting a new sofa, remember? At 12. Well, between 12 and and 3. So, fingers crossed it doesn't come early. Because like I said, I'm not answering it (laughs) if it does. I'm going to be like, can you guys just wait? (laughs) You know I'll have to answer it because then they'll never come back. But it's the first day. Like, give me a break. You know what I mean? It went through PayPal. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Definitely put anything in. You know what? You might be worth messaging um, the company as well. Just being like, hey, here's my receipt. My order didn't come. What's the dealio? Should it be here by now? Or... And don't worry if you go a little bit into these other petals. So if you see, I don't have my big, um, the big needle that I normally use. But if you see here, I've actually overlapped a little bit on some of these. That's fine because the inside ones are going to overlap these ones a little bit. So the first round is going to look a little bit messy. And you're going to be like, I'm not doing this right. I know I'm not, but you are, I promise. Okay, so we're almost done with these ones. And then, like I said, we're going to fill them in with little straight stitches. And this is a really good place to start because when we do satin stitch, we can focus on making them nice and parallel, nice and smooth, nice and beautiful. But for this one, we just have to fill in the circle. So if they're a little bit you know, not straight or if a little bit, whatever. Hi, Mel. Good morning. Then it's okay. Sorry, I didn't finish my, (laughs) didn't finish my sentence, did I? (laughs) typical it's a mixed bag when you when you tune in here you know you never know what you're gonna get like a um a hearty mixed tub or whatever they're called that's very um loud that song okay so i'm gonna do the um lighter color for the inside so you can just see the contrast because I have a feeling when I put the straight stitches in this um you're not going to be able to see them very well so let me get the pink color after I finish with this one and I'll show you how to do a knot at the end too look at you with the thread chicken I know You know, I always cut too much, and then I'm like, whoa, I cut too much. 
And then I'm like, wow, I'm glad I cut that much because actually I needed it. <laughs> so that was number star 20 from Anchor. And then we're going to use the fill to be number 39. It's the pink color. So when you do your knots, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Some people just leave it. Literally, they just leave the whole thing like that. Um, and then they do all the knots at the end. Some people will tie them all. Some people will weave their actual tail, which is this, in all their other stitches, and that will hold it in place. Um, I just do a knot. So you can do just another circle like this, like we started. And if you take your needle and put it inside the loop and then pull it, it's going to make that knot go really, really close to the base of your fabric. Okay, so you can do like two of those or one of those. The other way you can do it is to separate these threads. You can do, we've got six threads, so you can do three and three, four and two, one and two, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If you've only got three threads or two threads. Okay, and you just do like a double knot. So like one, two. <laughs> okay, so whichever way you do it, again, there's no right or wrong way. Do what makes you comfortable. Do what makes you happy, you know? And that's another thing I see a lot in the embroidery community is that there's always someone, there's always one, one person going, oh, that's not how you do it. It's like, well, yeah, that is how I do it. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to do it differently, babe, but that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so we've got our pink color. Whoa, that's close, 39 and then, like I said, we're just going to do some straight stitches in here. So I like to do one down the middle, and we're just going to fill in those shapes. So we're not looking for anything super smooth. I mean, obviously, I'm going to put them next to each other to fill them in because that's the easiest. But if you have some that are a little bit wonky or a little bit like, ooh, had a few too many there, babe. Um, that's fine. It's, it's okay. Don't worry about it. So let's just zoom in a little bit more like that. And I'm going to start right where I started before. Like I said, I like to start in the middle. So, oh, magpie outside. Doing a little hop, hop, hoppy. And then straight down. Now, some stitches you might only need two to fill it in. Like two right next to each other. Some you might need three. Some you might need four. It depends on how loose or tight you made your lazy daisy stitches. Okay? Or detached chain stitches. Oh, got it around the brick. So if you're new here, I use a lap stand. I'll zoom out real quick and you can have a look. Let's zoom out all the way. Okay, it looks like this. The top here turns. All right, and then I use a brick to hold it to the table because um, I like to be able to move it. I don't want to clamp it down. They also look like this. I've got two. You don't need one. They're not, they're not essential. Do you know what I mean? Um, if you find that your wrist is hurting from holding onto the embroidery hoop, try one of these. So you put your hoop in there. These little things go up and down, obviously. Okay, you just stick it in like that. Um, and then you can make this part right here bigger or smaller. Sorry, taller or shorter, depending on, you know, what you need. And then traditionally, you sit on this part. You sit on this part right here. So you put this right here under, under your leg. <laughs> And then this is why this swivels like this, because then you can put the hoop wherever you need to. And you can put it so that it's, you know, right in front of you. Um, or you can attach it on the side instead of attaching it like mine is right at the top. Um, you can get these from Cloudcraft or Hawthorne Handmade. I think I have money off at Cloudcraft, actually. I think I have like an affiliate link or something there. I need to check that. I think I said it last time, too. Um, but they really are worth it if you are doing a lot of stitching or um, if you find that you've just gotten into stitching and your hand is getting a bit achy. You don't want to be sat here stitching for, you know, hours and hours each day without taking breaks and stretching and all that kind of stuff. Because any kind of repetitive hand movement, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a bad time. Okay. 
And we don't want that. We want you stitching for a long time to come. Okay, so I've done three stitches here. That's probably enough. Now, do you see how this one has like a low, I'm going to call it a crack. See how it kind of goes down like that? We want to make our stitches longer here because we're going to fill in all this background. All of these shapes. Okay. So some of them, like I said, the first row is going to look a little bit wonky because you're like, wow, this is not right. It is, I promise. And again, it's all six strands. Num says, or if you've wrecked your shoulder, that's right. Or your elbow or anything that you need to be doing stitching. So just have a, have a think about that. I almost feel like I should have done red and red, but it's too late now. It'll look good. So we're just filling these in. Colors really are pretty. Nem says the colors are lush as they are. These colors are lush as they are. Yeah, they really are beautiful. So yeah, we're just filling in. We're just filling in the space. I've just been told I have tennis elbow, and the only thing I do a lot of is embroidery and crochet. Oh yes. That's common, actually. I think that's really common with crochet as well. But yeah, make sure that you're taking some time to do some stretches. I think I showed some stretches we used to do in um, school once. Susie. Oh. We used to do finger stretches. I can't remember... If it was like fifth grade, I think we used to do them. And our teacher would make us all stand and do all these different stretches. And we were like, she's crazy. But it was really nice. It was nice to have a break, you know, and do stuff that wasn't necessarily school. So do your finger stretches. Did I show you them? You do like this? And then you do the next one. And then you do the next one. Yeah, we had to do that. All the way until you have all five fingers out. And then you slowly put one of them down. So you do one, two, three, four, five. And then you do five, four, three, two, one. So there you go. Day one, a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> People are leaving like, nope. <laughs> I did not sign up for this. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's try and do this. We'll bang this one out. We've done 30 minutes. We did a bunch talking at the beginning though, so it's not my fault. It's all, it's all useful. So like I said earlier, these don't need to be parallel. These don't have to be perfect. We're not aiming for perfection here, okay? Come for the stitching, stay for the physio. <laughs> That's going to be the un, a new, that needs to be a sticker or something. Or like a, a needle minder. If you were here at the very beginning of the video, you saw a little sneak peek. <laughs> um, I did have needle minders made for the advent calendars. If you don't know what that means, then that's fine. Don't worry about it. But I'll show them here again. Don't they look so cool? And then I've glued little magnets on the back. So 
if you're getting an advent calendar, <laughs> we'll also be in the shop um, a bit later. I'm just spoiling all the gifts. I'm, I've got one more thing made, but I don't want to show you yet. But yeah, how cute. Okay, we're almost finished. Oh, power through, power through. And then we'll do the next layer. So the next layer, again, you can choose if you want to keep the same outline color and the same fill color or if you want to swap them around. So I've chosen two colors for this because you really can do a lot with it and then you can have different looks depending on how you feel. So you could do, like I said, the dark color all the way around for the outline Lazy Daisy slash Detached Chain Stitch. That stitch has two names. Um, and keep it all dark red, the fill and the outline, or you can kind of sw switch it up like I have. So I'm doing the, the pink color for the fill and the dark color for the outline. Now, the other thing I like to do before I take this color off of my needle is go back and have a little look and see if there's any anywhere around here that you might want to put another stitch. Meaning if you can see a lot of white fabric there or if you've just got like a little gap or a little hole like right here keeps looking at me. This one like that. Num says that his lazy daisies always come out a little pointy. Um, it might just be because you're pulling them a little too hard. So you might be like me, a little aggressive with the stitching. <laughs> okay, so like I said, have a little check around and make sure that there's not any... I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, and there's one here it looks like. Again, we're not aiming for perfection. Like there's also one down here it looks like I should get a little bit closer, but we're not aiming for perfection, okay? You're learning new stitches, you're trying something new, and that's it. So it won't be completely perfect. So don't don't think like not a miracle worker, okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to do, should I do pink? No, I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got a nice outline and a nice fill. So I've got the red again. Again, thread your needle. And we, we literally are going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to fill in the next layer. And with this one, we want to keep uh, attention to two things. Attention. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I think I am? Um, the inside of the circle here, okay, because we want to keep that nice and straight. And you want to go um, kind of overlap a little bit. So maybe come up here and go down into these right here when you do your lazy daisy tacking stitches, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. So don't think I'm just going to leave you to the wolves here. Dark red outline and fill would look cool too. Yes. So initially I had the fill and the outline the same um, for the outside edge. And then the inside was going to be pink. But then obviously, you know, I can't follow directions. Okay, so this is what I mean. So I'm coming up right here at the edge. Okay, and then, ooh, not there. And then right on the other side of that line, that's where you're gonna put your tacking stitch. And it will be into the um, pink fill stitches a little bit. So again, here, there's a knot there because that's where I started. So just give me patience, my darlings. Like that, okay. And then on the other side, we'll kind of be into those fill stitches. Okay? So that way it completely covers and looks like it's overlapping a little bit. Okay. 
Again, if you pull too hard, you are going to get really pointy ones. Especially because they're not pointy at the bottom. They're more open at the bottom. So because of that, um, they're more likely to go bump, bump, like a top of a triangle instead of nice and round. So you might have to kind of be gentle. We're almost finished. Then again, I'll take the pink. Have a fabulous day going back to bed. You should. Enjoy. Have a good sleep. I do love this technique, though, because I feel like it's a really easy way and to get something that's quite effective but you're really not doing like you know crazy stuff almost done and then we're back back to where we started from and we're back to the pink because it's all six strands, it's a bit um, textural as well. I feel like at the end I always get a bit um, pulley, you know? I always want to pull, I'm like really tight. At the beginning, I'm like, oh, make sure you're nice and gentle. <laughs> and by the end, I'm like, get it done. <laughs> like rage stitching. Okay, so we're back to the pink now. I like to give options. Because I feel like people always think that you can, there's only one way to do it. Or there's only one, you know, if, if I've colored it in a certain way, then you have to do it a certain way. And that's just not the truth, my friend. Lots of people can use the same colors and have completely different hoops, depending on where, where can we start here? Depending on where you use them and what stitches you use. So again, if you feel like I'm not feeling these stitches, I would like to try something else. Do it. Try something else. Like I said, this is where um, my knot is. Do you remember? It's where I started started the the pink let's go all the way up there with this one because it seems like I didn't do that and there's still some white showing there and with this one as well you, you can go over it a couple times and not not really affect the, the, smooth, the smoothness, okay? Because remember, like I said, satin stitch is meant to be smooth. They all lay right next to each other. Um, they're all parallel or, or angled in a specific way. So by just filling them in with straight stitches, you're getting kind of like a look of satin stitch, but if you get a little bit wild, or if you have to put a couple stitches rogue, it doesn't really matter. It almost looks like I need to go down a bit farther or something. And only you will know. So like I might use three stitches to fill in each of my petals, but you might need four. That's fine. If you've used a smaller hoop, then you'll need to use less threads because at the end of the day, however many threads you use, is really just however thick you want your line. So if I use one strand, it's gonna be very thin. If I use 
three strands is going to be much thicker. If I use all six, it's going to be the thickest. Well, that's not true because you can use eight or you can use 10 or you can use 12. <laughs> like you can use any number of strands you want. Um, there we go. Let's just put the one other one of these in here because it looks like my threads have split there. There we go. We only have three more petals left and then we're finished. And we're finished with today. I'm gonna do one more here. Stunning, thank you. Now, the most common thing that I notice with using all six strands is you can really hear the needle going through the fabric. And you can tell, I can tell at least, that I have to push more with my fingers. I have to pull them through. Um, so I would say that before you come and start stitching, make sure that your hoop is nice and tight. Because when you use more strands, you need to pull harder, which makes the fabric go down in the hoop more. So, and it becomes less taut. You don't get that drum sound anymore. So if you find yourself struggling, especially with the hoop um, or the thread laying flat or whatever, tighten your hoop completely like we did in the prep video um, and see if that helps. The other thing you can do is change your needle size because oftentimes um, you've just got the wrong needle. So I like to match the thickness of my threads to the thickness of my needle because what this is doing is making a hole for your threads to go through, okay? So if you need a smaller hole, meaning if you need just, let's take one of these, just one strand, okay? So this is how thick one strand is. But you're making a hole that's that big it doesn't seem like it's a big difference, but it really is. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna make this big hole with your thick needle, and you're gonna have this really thin, small strand to go through it, and there's gonna be room in that hole for your thread to move, okay? Hopefully I explained that right. You never know. I keep joking that the babies take my brain, but it's not a joke anymore, it's for real. It's for real. <laughs> like a hundred percent can't say anything now at all because you just stumble over everything okay so again make sure that you don't want to add any other stitches or anything like that we'll do the center later because we're going to use a different stitch for that so i wanted to teach that all at one time and then we can bang out all the little stitches that we need to do so again we're just gonna do some knots on the back. And I want to talk about saving your scraps as well. So I said I wasn't going to show it, but I am going to show it. Um, so I've also made these little things, little thread savers. Okay. So all of these pieces like this, you can also put them in a jar, which is what I, which is like my favorite, my favorite option. Um, save them all because what we're going to end up doing is using all of these little pieces in other places. So you can use them for outlines. You can use them like in the corn. I know uses some of these colors. Um, we can do French knots for the fill. If you want to really fill in the gaps, like between some of the elements. So keep all these pieces. Don't throw them away. Um, so yeah, if you've got a little jar like this, shove them in there. Um, and like I said, I also made these things. And you can just loop them around like that and then save all of the little pieces because we can use them later. And we're not really about throwing away nice threads, you know? Keep them. Keep them because we'll use them. And then later, when you just need a little bit of one color, you won't be like, oh no, I've got to cut a whole new piece off. You can just keep it. Okay? There's also a, um, where is it? A little shell, but 
Maybe I'll do that in the spring or something. So we've got a leaf. That's what we've got for the Christmas. So that's what we've got. So I'm going to keep this here with all my stuff. I like to wind mine on little pegs. You can see how I do that, how I store all my threads um, in my highlights. And yeah, that's me finished. All done. Day one. So give me a minute to um, put all the strands in the whatever in the description. So about five minutes. And then this will be up on my IGTV. And I've actually brought my iPad because a lot of people have said they can't find where is IGTV. They, they don't know what it is. So I thought I'd just tell you real quick. Let's see here. Load. Here we go. Let's see if you can see it. So IGTV is changing to I Instagram video now. Okay. But it's the same thing. So on some people, it might be like a play button. You know, like the triangle that you get on like your VCR. <laughs> um, it's, some people have that. And some people have the TV still. So I still have the television. So you go to here and they're all going to be saved um, as the Happy Harvest Stitch Along. So if you go to series, please, the Happy Harvest Stitch Along, if you click that, I only have one video because it's the prep video, isn't it? So when this video saves, it will be there as well. And then actually the other thing I do is that the last video from the day before gets saved here. So this is the how to finish your hoop video from the last stitch along. That one will be taken off the, this grid here, but it's still saved here under series if you want to be like specific. And the changing season stitch along and they're all labeled day 15, day 14, blah, 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 blah. And then if you click on it, shush, and you tap the arrow at the top here, this one, this will show you the caption and the caption tells you all the things that we learned and then how many strands. This was details day, so there's not a lot of information. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, these are some things that you can do. Um, but all of the other ones will have like actual how many strands and what the stitch is. So it's like quite concise. Um, and that way, hopefully, there you go. You can see it without the light. Um, hopefully you can just see it really quickly there, especially if you already know the, the stitches and you don't need to actually watch the video. You can just quickly go here and I do the same thing on YouTube so that if you click the arrow on YouTube, then the description will come down and you'll see what we've done. So hopefully that's suitable and is uh, helpful so that you know where to find everything. Okay. As always, I'm here in DM. So if you have a question about any part or if you have a, a bit of a problem or for whatever reason, just send me a DM. Um, I check them pretty much throughout the entire day. So yeah, like and during the stitch alongs, I'm always here. <laughs> like I'm always on my phone because I don't want anyone to ever feel like I don't know what to do or I have a problem or whatever and feel like they're alone because that's not the case at all. I'm always here. So send a message. Nothing is too small. Okay. If you're like, I don't get how you tie a knot. Like I'm happy to send a video to you showing how to tie a knot. Like anything. I'm here. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you tomorrow, the same time, 10 o'clock. Um, and yeah, we'll go on to the next part. I'm not going to tell you the next part though, because I don't want you guys to get ahead. <laughs> So enjoy. If you do finish today's flower, take a, take a snap, put it on Instagram, um, tag me at anchor crafting, hashtag the Barbie Fox S A L. And that's stitch, uh, like a long L, uh, anchor crafting, anchor crafts, anchor threads. And yeah, enjoy. I hope you have a lovely, lovely Monday and I'll speak with you later. Okay. Bye.